All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about something pretty cool in my opinion, and that is what I think, in my opinion, probably one of the ultimate survival Bark River knives. Now, I have quite a few Bark Rivers, have had quite a few over the course of the years, and I think that just about any of them could honestly be pretty good for survival. Of course, most, if not all of them, are designed for wilderness applications. Of course, the Bravo One being a great tactical slash utility knife. This is one of my favorites. It's absolutely love it. This one is an A2. It's an older school Barky, but it is such a cool one. And I think one of my favorite things about it is it does not have polished uh, micarta handles, but it just has raw um, black micarta handles. So it is pretty cool. I think they actually, maybe, maybe they're green, but I don't know, they soaked up so much oil through the years, they are definitely a little bit darker. However, definitely very cool. But at the same time too, while this is not a bad survival knife and being made out of nearly quarter inch thick, uh, a2 tool steel this guy is a little bit um a little bit small on the uh, on the uh, blade side and you guys can see there has about a little over four inch blade so it's not the biggest knife and so probably not the most desirable for wilderness survival applications however i recently came across a design and a model from bark river and their wide plethora of models that would honestly probably be pretty good for survival but the one that struck my eyes the most was the bark river knives cub and this is the cub i don't know quite why they call it a cub because this is not a small knife by any means if you guys can see here um, comparing it apples to apples with the um, bravo one and of course this is a bravo one so like i said around a four and a half inch blade on this bad boy so the um, cub over here has i believe if memory serves a five and a quarter inch um, blade length on this guy so definitely decent sized larger cutting edge cutting edge specifically than my GSO-5. Um, so it's a compact, I would say overall size knife, but it has a nice and long blade length to it. So I'm not, like I said, entirely sure why they call this a cub because it's not exactly a small knife. And of course we're dealing with a 0 0.17, so basically a 5 30 seconds of an inch thick um, stock of, of course, one of my favorite steels, CPM 3V. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll, actually put it correct facing um, so there you guys you can see but this is in my opinion one of the cooler um, Bark River knives blades that is totally viable for survival and once again we're really pushing into that you know almost six inch um, blade length and because of that you really start to get into some good useful um, larger tasks and larger abilities in addition to I think it's really worth pointing out um, another thing that I get like so many comments about um, people you know saying like oh you know my Bark River is every Bark River I've owned has always had some kind of defect and once again this is i think my like sixth or seventh bark river that i've owned and looking at this guy you know a lot of people when i've done my different videos on barkies always have something to say about you know like their knives having defects and so this is yet another bark river that i own and honestly i really don't see any defects now some people very observant people might notice that this fuller here is slightly longer on this side and once again i just want you guys to know that with bark river for those who don't know all of these are handmade like these are not um these are what you call a semi-custom because they're made to a pattern so this is a cub this is a pattern a knife for them but this is still handmade so this is a semi-custom knife where this isn't necessarily a one-off knife but this is still handmade in-house by bark river so seeing slight imperfections in this is not to be you know totally like um, mind-blowing but when, when i talk about like imperfections i typically think of like things that are legitimately wrong with the knife like you know a chip in the blade or you know something that affects the function of the knife so you know having a fuller that is slightly longer on one side as opposed to the other side you know really honestly doesn't matter that much because it's not going to affect the structural integrity of the knife it's not going to affect how it performs how it cuts through material it's strictly an aesthetic thing and some people may not like that but it doesn't mean that the knife is defective right and another thing I, I heard some other people say is that they didn't um, like how the grinds or the grinds were uneven but I don't know like this is honestly to me this is very even hopefully you guys can kind of see here you know just how even those grind lines are when they come down so or I should say the plunge grind for those um, people who know their knife terminology like very even plunge grind on this guy and once again also just comparing my um 
what is this, Bark River Bravo one, pretty even. This one's slightly off, but um, pretty darn even, right? So anyways, these guys, like once again, all of them are handmade, so they're not going to be absolutely perfect, but you know, they're functionally speaking, perfect. So there's nothing wrong with them. Now in typical Bark River fashion, I have to say that even though I'm not the largest fan of polished handles, this thing is still insanely comfortable. One thing that I always enjoy, and I'm not saying that there are no other knife companies out there that make very comfortable handles, but I swear every time I hold a Bark River, they absolutely feel like they are just molded to my hand. Now this one's a little bit interesting, and what really got me kind of uh, excited about the Cub is this Laplander styled handle. For those who don't know, uh, what I mean by Laplander is there are traditional um, Scandinavian knives, uh, traditionally kind of like Pucos, that are larger, like this size of a knife, that have a very similar handle, and they are called Laplander knives. So this is a very um, kind of flared out, almost like on an axe handle. This is very swollen out, it's very large, and I wouldn't really say that this is for, you know, like chopping, because this knife is still, you know, fairly thin, fairly lightweight, and fairly small for really being a good chopper. But what it does is it really gives you the ability to really lock into that knife and just once again have an incredibly comfortable handle. Once again, too, seeing that beautiful contouring that Bark River does always knocks it out of the frickin' park, in my opinion. Um, I just love Love the way they contour their knives. Once again, they feel very natural in my hand and super, super comfy. So anyways, um, other than that, you have a little bit, a very small portion of jimping right at the end or like terminal end of your handle. So it basically goes right to the end of the handle. So if you want to bypass it, this is what I love about Bark River is, you know, is there jimping there? Yes. Can you lock into it? Yes. Do you, if you want to bypass it, can you? Very easily. My thumb's natural resting point on this knife is right here. You guys can see, hopefully, the jimping is there, my natural resting point is here. So very easy to bypass the jimping. And once again, too, when it comes to striking ferro rods off the spine, which these are sharpened, the spines are sharpened to strike ferro rods on Park Rivers, um, you can easily do that as well. So I love all the features of it. Now kind of finishing it up and wrapping it up, this is a convex ground piece of CPM 3V. So it is going to be something that you either like or you don't like. Not everyone likes convex grinds. Of course, um, Bark River is one of the more famous knife companies for doing convex grinds. Even, I, I wanna say just about every knife they make has a convex of some sort. Like even their Bark River Knives Bushcrafter um, that I have conveniently here is a Scandi Vex. So this is still a convex Scandinavian grind. So. Uh, so once again, you know, Scandi grind, but convex. So um, they are really famous for their convex grinds. And I personally am not the largest fan of convex grinds, but they do a good job and they are honestly very, very sharp. So anyways, this is the Bark River Knives Cub. I think it's a really cool knife um, from Bark River that definitely has a lot of capability and survival aspects bled into it. Of course, there are some, you know, stylistic choices here with the fuller and with the, you know, swedge of the tip. So you can have a clip point with a swedge and are these things the best for survival? No, but is this gonna get in the way of you being able to baton with this knife? Also, no. If you have plenty of meat up here to hit with a baton, and it's not going to chew up your batons. So, Anyways, in my opinion, that's, that's kind of what I think about it. That is the Bark River Knives Cub. It is a pretty darn cool knife, in my opinion, and I'm definitely happy to have one in the fold. Of course, there will be more um, strict like survival field testing with this knife coming in the summer, but for now, that is the knife. Now, before we fully wrap this up, this is the sheath. I think it's a pretty cool sheath. I'm not the largest fan of it, to be honest, because there are some retention issues. I can't really show you guys hear too much but um, this thing does not have the greatest um, retention like you guys can see here it will hold it but very little force is required to have it fall out of its sheath um, but this as it falls out of my hand this is a pretty cool sheath because of course these two vertical um, or I should say horizontal if the knife is like this horizontal facing um, 
pieces or straps of leather are designed for scout carry. So this is a dual sheath. You can rock it with a normal vertical carry, um, just belt loop here, or you do have the option to run this scout style with these loops. So pretty cool in that regard. Of course, you do have the snap closure here. Um, that doesn't want to come open, but does of course snap. And that's how you're supposed to um, remove it is by opening the, that guy, but you really don't need to because there isn't a super high amount of friction created by the strap. So in my opinion, it's a little bit of a wash. Cool thing about this, I will say this is an ambidextrous sheath to an extent. So if you want to put this in either way, you can. Um, so depending on if you're a righty or a lefty, this sheath will actually work for you. So pretty cool, but that is the sheath for the Cub. And that is overall the Bark River Knives Cub. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do a video on this guy because once again, there's not a lot of videos out on the Cub. And I am, regardless to what people say and how people feel, I personally am a fan of Bark River Knives. Are they expensive? Well, they're not cheap, but they're certainly not the most expensive survival knives out there. I mean, the Cub is around a $220 knife. This right here is around a $320 knife. So once again, you know, depending on how much you want to spend, you can get into some really good quality Bark River knives for reasonable prices. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.